Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. I'm the creator of the Divi Responsive Helper plugin. And today we have an exciting new update version 2.3. So in this video, I'm going to show you all the new features and settings. You can get a list of all of the new features over here on the blog post. That's what we're going to be looking at right here. So you can read a little bit about everything that's newest. Let's just get started here. So the first feature that I cover here is the number of column settings in the Woo modules. Now we already have settings to set the number of columns on desktop, tablet, and phone for, you know, for rows, regular rows and columns, you know, things like the gallery, the portfolio, the blog, um, what am I missing? Oh, and the Woo products, it used to be called the shop. So we already, already had that. But now we have added to the three remaining modules related to WooCommerce that frankly have uh, no settings for columns at all. And you can see the screenshots here that I have. So the Woo related products, um, it has one setting to set the columns, but it did not have responsive settings. So you can see here in the screenshot, we have the responsive setting open, and then you can choose the number of columns, you know, probably three desktop, or four, or maybe two on tablet, one on phone, something like that. The Woo Products Upsell module has the exact same situation where they had, you know, the number of columns setting, but it was not responsive. Now the Woo Cross Sells, the one that you use in your shopping cart, like when you want to um, basically suggest other products to a customer, it did not have any settings related to the columns. So you can see we had to add our own toggle and um, just, yeah, the same settings basically to set uh, because there's literally no column settings in that module at all. So we've added those. So just like the other ones, you can enable these in theme options. So go to your Divi theme options, res Divi responsive helper and column stacking. And right here you can see those settings that we've just added. Another interesting setting that we just added is custom gutter width. Now, by default, you can set a custom gutter and you can choose a number. So it's one, two, three, or four. The default is three. You may recognize that from being in the rows. Let me show you that. So any green row here in the design tab, sizing, you can come in here like this and enable use custom gutter width. And then like this here is what I was saying. You can choose one, two, three, or four, and the default is on three. And what this does is these numbers each represent a percentage. So like, for example, three, maybe 5.5%. So that's the amount of space between columns. I think uh, four is 8.5%, things like that. So each number represents a percentage. Now the question comes if you want to change that per device, notice that there's no responsive settings. And also if you want to make it in pixels or some other unit other than percentages. And that's where our new setting comes in. Over here in the theme options, go to the layout tab and all the way at the bottom, we have custom gutter width. You can enable that. And like it says here in the help text, enabling this will add additional settings in the Divi Builder in the rows. So let's go ahead in here and take a look. If I scroll down, Right here at the bottom here, it says custom gutter value. So now I can put something like 45 PX. Um, I can enable this and set something different for a tablet, you know, whatever, something like that. So that's a new setting and this appears whenever this is enabled, right? So without using custom gutter width, basically this setting, this new one here overrides this one. Okay, so it's overriding this one. So you can kind of uh, ignore that while this is being used. Sadly, this is a little bit limited at this time because it will not work with the number of column features that we have like in all of our modules and stuff. So even the different features that we have like setting the number of columns on tablet and phone, it would take a ton of work for us to make this compatible. But if that's something you're interested in, definitely let us know. Now here's an improvement column stacking for specialty sections. So this is enabled by default. If you have a specialty section, so the ones that are right here, like these red and orange ones, and then orange and green. So let's say, for example, I choose this one, and then maybe I choose this. 
in the past, you could not have like the normal um, the settings that we've added for like this enable column stacking order and the number of columns on tablet number of columns on phone and things like that they would didn't they did not work on specialty sections but now they do so just like normal rows you now have those settings in any of these green rows here collapse submenu when another is open so basically we have these various settings related to the submenu so we've added where we collapse the submenu because you know it can get really long and it's just nice to close that so in the menu module here for example delivery responsive helper toggle we have this setting collapse mobile menu submenus now we've just added this new setting collapse submenu when another is open and uh, we can read that a little bit but it basically just means though there will only ever be one sub menu open expanded at one time because now if I click another one that other one will close okay let me just show you that alright so here I have like I said the sub menus collapse so if I open this and here I'm looking at these items underneath this one and then I open this one notice how the other one closes see that so that's the new feature alright pretty cool I think open and closed icon picker for the mobile menu. Now, in, in the past, we simply used the hamburger menu when you know when the menu is closed, and then an X when it was open. So you click the X to close it. So now all we've done is we've added these icon pickers here. So you could technically pick any of these icons that you want for the menu closed icon and the menu open icon. So that's just an improvement by giving you the option to choose the icons viewport size so if I go back to the theme options go back to preview size you'll notice this new setting here show viewport size now if I enable this and you also have to have one of these enabled for this to work because it's showing up on the, in the Divi builder in the visual builder at the bottom left in the page setting so I'll need one of these enabled at least so I'm gonna save that alright well, when this is expanded right here you can see viewport size so right now it's telling me that it's 1745 by 915 okay so it's just um, an additional handy feature if you want that to show the viewport size that you're currently viewing notice that if I change it you can, the number changes so there you can see that now it's 400 by 915 here it's 768 by 915 and here it just happens to be you know 1745 wide and then here's the height improved the fixed navigation on tablet and phone basically Divi has this setting over here fixed navigation bar now that's referring to the default header menu so it's not referring to the menu module at all but it's the default one and what we've done is in our settings here in the menu we have fixed navigation bar okay and the, theirs only worked on desktop so we added the setting to extend that to tablet and phone but there was one caveat ours only worked when the main one was enabled so if you had this fixed navigation bar on mobile it only worked if the main one up here was enabled because I just thought that made sense and then I got to thinking I think we had someone ask about this what if you just want it fixed on tablet and phone and I was like oh yeah now enabling this will simply do that whether or not you have this one on doesn't matter anymore this will enable the fixed default header on mobile and tablet okay another feature is removing plugin data when you uninstall and that also is in theme options right here in new tab now this is off by default and please do not enable this unless you really are serious um, so removing the plugin data now if that's enabled now if I go and deactivate and delete the plugin it's gone any of my settings are going to be gone when you install it again it's going to be like the first time um, the way plugins work they store you know these settings in the database so if you were to go and delete this while this was off if you were to go and delete the plugin and or you know upload a new version whatever it is it doesn't matter the settings remain okay you don't have to worry about that 
This is only if you want to permanently disable this, but why would you? And of course, there's always other improvements and changes and bug fixes, um, but you can check the change log for that. This is a rundown of everything that's new since version 2.2. Some of the new features that I talked about were added in various little updates here and there, um, but we'd like to cover them when we get to the next you know, major version number. So this plugin, as you can tell, is very mature, has lots of settings. I should do a count. I think we're over 50, I'm not even sure. Um, but you can see that this plugin adds lots of value. It's one of the most popular uh, Divi plugins in the world, and we're very happy about that. And we want to continue to make it better. So if you have ideas related to anything related to like this kind of utility type tool relating to making Divi responsive, then definitely let me know. And we'll be happy to consider that. Until next time, thank you for watching. We hope you enjoy the update.